My name is Michael Fife. I grew up in Northern Alberta. I recently came to Saskatoon, kind of within the last year and a half. I'm going to university at the U of S and I'm just been going to Grace Fellowship for like a year and a half and really, really loving it. I had really great, loving, supportive parents. They really, they really did a lot right. They did basically everything that they could, right? I mean, they set me up in the best way that they could. They taught me about Jesus. They brought me to church. They were involved in church. And so I'm really grateful to have that. And yeah, they pushed me on the right path and they gave me a decision uh, to like, and it wasn't even explicit. It was just kind of like, they just stopped getting me up for church in the morning, kind of around like grade 11 or 12. And I, you know, I'd stayed up late nights before. And so I just didn't feel like going to church. So I wouldn't go to church. Um, I didn't read my Bible for like a couple of years. I didn't pray at all. I basically just treated God like he didn't exist. And I, I would have rather at that time that he didn't. I think the reason that I wish God didn't exist at the time is just because he seemed kind of like a spoil sport. Like he just wanted to take away all my fun. Yeah, he wanted to basically, you know, just put his thumb down on, it, on anything that I wanted to do. And, you know, me being someone who like wanted to be cool, who wanted to be liked, who wanted to be, um, to make something of myself, let's say that was really, um, that was, yeah, very contrary to what I wanted, right? And, and me and my pride, I was just like, well, why, why would I want someone to take away a life, right? Why would I want someone to just enforce arbitrary rules on me without, you know, with no purpose, right? That's what I thought. So yeah, it was just a lot of stuff that I saw my parents doing that I was just like, it just didn't, didn't compute in my brain, right? Just the idea of sin. Is sin an oopsie or is it uh, uh, like, you know, is it a rebellion against the creator who made me? I thought it was just an oopsie. I thought it was a whatever. Um, I just see that's not the case now, <laughs> you know what I mean? But in my head, I kind of convinced myself like, oh, well maybe I'll still get into heaven, you know, maybe if I, you know, just say the right thing at the pearly gates, then maybe I'll get into heaven. But I think at the time I was telling people I wasn't a Christian just because I was basically like, well, I'm not, right? I don't follow any of the teachings. I don't really live my life according to the way that, you know, because I, I knew the Bible a little bit, right? I'd, I'd been to Sunday school as a kid and my parents taught me about Jesus. And um, so, yeah, so I think I was telling people I wasn't a Christian, but I think maybe I was trying to delude myself into like, well, maybe I'm just good enough to get into heaven. So my sister was going to uh, just a gospel community at Grace. And um, I also had a friend who was like, who I'd known in the past. Like he was also leading this community group that my sister was in. And he's like texting me, he's like, hey, you should come out. Like no pressure, but if you want to come out, that'd be sweet. And I was like, okay, I'm not a Christian, but whatever, I'll, I'll go out and see what happens. And um, I remember the first time I went, I, I like sat down with, with everyone and it was like a good chat. We talked about the Bible and I was like, I know this, I know the right answers and stuff like that. And then I can't remember exactly um, what we talked about, but it was just like, these people like genuinely want to get to know me, you know, like they want me to know Jesus because not because they want to shove him down my throat, but because they want me to experience what life is like with him because they've experienced something that maybe I haven't with Jesus. And um, so that was really cool to experience that in a gospel community. I saw this book called uh, Skeletons in God's Closet by Joshua Ryan Butler on uh, my brother and sister-in-law's bookshelf. And I think they told me about it because they'd read it in a, in a book club or something like that a couple years or maybe a year prior or something. And so I was like, I don't know, I guess I'll give it a try. Um, so that kind of changed my perspective. And then once I finished that book, I was like, okay, what else do we got, you know? And so like, okay, maybe let's figure out who this Jesus guy is. So then I looked on, on their bookshelf again and I saw a book called Case for Christ by Lee Strobel. And he's basically just talking about what is the evidence for Jesus' death? What is the evidence for his burial? What is the evidence for his resurrection? And if you can prove that he died, and if you can prove that he was buried, and if you can prove that people saw him after he died, then he probably died and rose again. And if he died and rose again, then what does that mean for me? And so I got to the end of that book and I was like, shoot, like, what does that mean? You know, now I have to make a decision, but I don't want to make a decision because then I can't be my own God anymore. Right. And it'll be a hard path to walk down. You know, I'd heard about um, Christians who get martyred. I'd heard about Christians who get persecuted. I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to die. You know, I don't want to get persecuted, but then 
if there's that many people who are willing to get persecuted for Christ, then why? Like, there must be a reason behind it. There must be something to this, this, this guy, you know, this guy who was and is God. And so, um, so yeah, I was forced to make a decision. Um, and I didn't make a decision that night because I was like, well, maybe I'll sleep it off. And, um, and then a couple weeks later, I was just kind of really lonely again, just like playing guitar. And my sister came up to me and she's like, what's up? And I just started crying. And I don't even know why. Like, I don't cry that often. And I don't know, I just felt like really heavy. And then, so we just started talking about Jesus and the gospel. And I had all these questions like, She's like, well, I feel like you're just kind of making excuses excuses at this point, you know? You're just making excuses not to believe at this point. And she's like, so I think you need to make a choice. Like right now, I need you to make, just make a choice. And I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> yeah. And then, so yeah, we prayed and that was like a year and a half ago. And so I've just kind of been walking on a path since then. Yeah, I love what it says in Romans 10, nine to 10. It says, uh, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. Um, I think the thing that I find so sweet about that is I thought that Christianity before was this constant, I'm ascending a ladder and I'm trying to get to God and he's constantly eluding me and it, nothing's ever good enough for him and he just wants to judge me and send me to hell and all these things. But then this verse just kind of makes me realize that Jesus has already done all the work, right? It's so simple for me. I just have to believe with my heart that he died for my sins in my place and then that he rose from the dead, right? To believe that and to confess it with my mouth. It's like, how can you not love that? How can you not see that as good news, you know? Like I see that on my own, when I go on my own path, I just, I make a mess of things, right? And, and Jesus just, just takes all that, takes all my sin, takes all my rebellion against him when I'm his enemy, and still says, no, I'm gonna die for you, you know? Not because you deserve it, but because I love you. Okay, well, why do you love me? Because I love you, you know? And that's as simple as it gets. And part of the reason I wanna get baptized is just because um, just because Jesus tells us to, you know, it's, it, it's as simple as that. And honestly, I probably should have done it a while ago because I've seen it before. I know what it means. And I just, I just like, it's just kind of, a, it's kind of a public act. It seems just kind of arbitrary, but it's one of those things that like, just because I see something as arbitrary, doesn't mean that it is, you know, and just because Jesus tells me to, that should be enough of a, of a justification to do it. And I think. Um, I've also heard baptism explained as you identifying with Jesus in his death and his resurrection and in that way also identifying with his church, uh, people who he died for and, and who he rose again to create. Um, and so, yeah, just identifying with a member of his church just for, yeah, I don't know, like a, yeah, yeah, as a reminder, even just a, to, to myself what the gospel is, right? Jesus' death and his resurrection and what that means for me and, and for his church, so. Michael, do you believe Jesus is the only way to eternal life that he, through his work on the cross and rising from the dead, has done everything necessary for you to be accepted by God and received into his family? I do. <laughs> Do you commit to follow and obey Jesus in everything and live out this obedience as part of a gospel-centered local church? I do. All right, Mike, based on your confession um, of Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.